Before we start this video, I just want to say that there is a lot of information involved in this video for all sorts of different things, from what are add-ons and how they work, to how to upload them to your worlds, your realms, your servers, how to make existing servers work with add-ons, what issues you might face, and how to start brand new servers as well. There's a lot of things to go through, it's going to last a long time, but I have broken it down into timestamps for you below. If you check the description below the video, you'll see the timestamps so you can jump to the sections that you need. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching. Hello and welcome to a brand new tutorial with me, Foxy Notel, here on the Minecraft.net website, looking specifically at the add-on page. If you're not sure what add-ons are, then I'm not sure why you're watching this video, but you might find it useful anyway. I've been releasing quite a few add-ons on my website lately and I'm getting a lot of questions about how you add them to worlds and servers and how to fix problems when problems arise. So today we're going to look into that. Your first port of call though should be the minecraft.net add-ons page. As you can see here and if you scroll down there are some installation instructions for Android, iPhone and iPad, Windows 10, even the Oculus Rift, Gear VR and Amazon devices as well which show you basically very very briefly how to add these packs to your devices now we're going to go into a lot more depth to that but before we do that let's actually talk about what add-ons are or what is involved in add-ons so if we look at the add-on packs that i've been working on and some of which i've released you'll see there are various different types of packs there's ones called mc pack there are ones called dot mc add-on and there are ones called dot mc world and what's the difference well, realistically, there's not a great deal of difference between pack and add-on. I could call any of these .mc add-on or .mc pack and they will work just as well. But generally speaking, an MC add-on is a behavior pack and a .mc pack is a resource pack. And if you don't know what the difference between those are, let's have a look at that. If we hop over to Minecraft and look at creating a new world, you'll see there are two options down at the bottom left. One's called resource packs and one's called behavior packs. Now, this is different from the main settings page because on the main settings page, if we go back out of this and into settings and down there in global resources, you will just see active and my packs. Now, behavior packs are not going to be listed in here. Only, only resource packs are going to be listed here. And there's a reason for that. This pack here, Foxy 2.0.0, is a resource pack. If I double click that, that's going to import that into Minecraft like that. And it says successfully imported Foxy resource pack 2.0. And if we go into settings, you'll now see that that is in the my packs area on the global resources in your settings. What a resource pack does is that changes things that you can see, visual things like mobs, entities, items, animations, even the look of the game. If I activate that pack now, it will go into the active packs. And if I look at this screen now, you'll see subscribe to Foxy up there. And if I go to play any of my games, let's go into this test mode, you'll see we've got custom things here like visit foxynotail.com. You'll also see in this world, if I grab myself a shield, I've got a much smaller shield than the normal one, which means that when I'm using my shield, it's not taking up all of my screen. Even if I put it in my offhand look, it's not taking up tons and tons of the screen space, which is great. So resource packs are all about what things look like and not how they act or behave. Going back to my released packs, this one here, which is a death counter, is all about how things behave rather than how things look. So if I add that to the game, it will say successfully imported Foxy's death counter version one. If we go into the settings and global resources and my packs, you'll see there isn't one there. It's not listed anywhere down there because it's a behavior pack. It's not a resource pack, so it can't affect any of this stuff. It can only affect your game. So if we go to a world, let's go create a new world and go down to behavior packs, you'll now see that in here, we've got Fox's death counter in the behavior pack section down here. The resource packs folder has still got my new one there, but the behavior packs got this one. So if we add this to a world, it's gonna ask us to turn off achievements, that's fine. And let's create a new world and let's see what that does. It really is as simple as if I die, it's going to add one to my screen, but it's gonna be difficult to kill myself on here without commands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of that. I'm going to go to the settings. I'm going to scroll down to activate cheats. I'm going to go to play, kill at S, and there we go, I'm dead. And now you will see if I go to the escape screen, there is a one next to my name. That's my death counter. Kill myself again. 
and you'll see now there is a two next to my name and any other players that join your world will get the death count next to their name as well so that's a behavior pack that is working with the behaviors of the game it's not changing how anything's looking at all it's just about how things are behaving so what do i mean about resource packs change how things look and behavior packs change how things behave well let's look at a vanilla resource pack this is the vanilla resource pack as part of the actual game and you can see in there we've got entities We've got animations, we've got animation controllers, we've got fonts, items, materials, models, particles, render controllers, sounds, texts, textures, UIs. So basically all the textures in the game are found in resource packs, so you can change any of the textures from the game, even the block textures. It's got all the sound effects that are in the game, so you can change sound effects. It's got the text that come up on the screen, the language files that change the language of the game. It's got the user interface and changes you can make to the buttons and stuff around the game and the entities themselves. It can change how, for instance, a bat can be animated when it's resting or when it's flying, how it looks differently. So it's all about how things visually look in the game and they can all be tweaked and changed using these resource packs. All you do is basically copy the files into your own resource pack, tweak them, and then you can add them to the game. Now there is a little bit more to it than that, but that's basically how it works. With behavior packs, looking at the vanilla behavior pack, you've also got entities, but in this case, this isn't how the entities look or are animated, it's how they behave. So if we look at a donkey, for instance, in our text file here, we can see that we can grow a donkey. It's ageable by giving it wheat or sugar or hay blocks or apples or golden carrots or golden apples or enchanted apples. We can look at whether a wild donkey is rideable or not and we can look at how we would tame a donkey and if it's equipable with a chest or a saddle and things like that. So this tells the game how entities work and what they're supposed to do in the game rather than what they look like similarly we've got things like loot tables which allow us to say what drops we get from the items when they die we've got certain item things that we can fiddle with in here but the most part is generally tends to be the entities they are adding custom recipes and custom blocks as well but they are currently behind experimental mode and we've also got things like spawn rules in here so we can see with the cow spawn rule, it's saying to us here that a cow will only spawn on the surface, it will only spawn on grass, it needs to have a brightness filter of between light level of 7 and light level of 15, it doesn't matter what the weather is, and this is like how regular they're going to spawn, what the herd size they will spawn in will be, and what biome it can be in, and the biome tag that it's looking for is any biome that's got the tag animal in it. So that's basically how behavior packs work, on a very, very scratch the surface kind of way. So what's the difference between .mc pack, .mc add-on and .mc world? Very, very little. The game will know whether it's a resource pack or a behavior pack by the files that are inside it. And an .mc world file, if we open this archive, like so, generally has the whole world in it. So this actually contains a world with resource packs and behavior packs already loaded into it. So when you double click on this one, like so, the game will actually import the entire world with the resource packs and behavior packs already in them. So now if we go into worlds and we scroll far enough to when that world was made, we can see it's here, super chunk block. And if we click on that, we'll see in the behavior packs, it's got that one already added and it's got the resource pack already added. So as a texture pack or resource pack maker, it's much easier for us to just add them in as part of a world to save you the faff of trying to add them in yourself. However, that's what we are here for today is to find out how we add them in ourselves, and there's lots of different ways of adding them into our worlds, so let's find out. We're going to cover adding them into single player worlds as well as realms and servers as well. So hold on to your boots, we're going to get stuck into this and the first thing we're going to look at is how to add one into a, just a normal world. I would just like to take a second to say that if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, then please do so if you enjoy this sort of content and you find this sort of content useful. Also, if you could leave a like and drop a comment about any other sorts of tutorials that you would like to see from me or anything that you're having issues with yourself. Also, don't forget to join my Discord. Anyway, that's enough plugging from me. Let's get back to the video. So to start with, we're going to look at how to add my chunk loader pack into a brand new world. Not an existing world, but a brand new world. And there's three files for this. There's the .mc pack, 
behavior pack, resource pack, and the add-on. If we open the add-on with our zip thing again, you'll see that it has both the behavior pack and the resource pack in there, and we can add those both together. So if we double click on that, the game's gonna start importing it, and then it says it successfully imported it. So now if we go to create new world, and then create new world again you'll see that down in the resource packs and behavior packs areas here we've got those already listed if we go to behavior packs and go to my packs you'll see fox's chunk loader is there if we activate that that's actually also going to activate our resource pack as well because they are dependent on each other it says in the code behind them that they're dependent so we don't need to add both of those it's already going to add one or the other let's go into that again and do that again create new create world and this time i'm going to add the resource pack like so it's gone into our ad active packs if we go to behavior packs you'll also see that that's been added in so now if we create the new world both of those packs will be added in here and we can test that with some commands which means i do need to go back into the settings and activate cheats so that i can actually enable the commands and if we do function run you will see we now have chuck loader sat next to us so that works so that's the easiest way to do this but what if you run into a problem right at the first step what if you've got your file and you double click it and it says import started but then it says fail to import the pack duplicate pack detected well if it says duplicate pack detected that's good that means you've already got it if you haven't already got it and it says that it means there is a conflict if you go to global resources and then active and then click on one you can click the little tick box next to it and see if there's any errors now you'll also see there's a pack id this id is found actually deep inside the pack itself if we go back to our pack here let's have a look at the behavior pack one of these and open the archive look in there we've got a manifest file here if i double click on that it's going to open that up in my text edit editor and that refers to this number here the uuid now this is just a randomly generated number that you generate with a uuid generator on the internet it doesn't mean anything and it is possible although very unlikely that this could have the same uuid from one pack as another if you found that that's the case and you've got a duplicate pack just come in here change that to something else and then upload your pack again and it should go in so well let's do that let's open up that pack that it wouldn't let us open up in our zip archive let's go to the behavior pack part let's change the manifest let's call that 213 there for no particular reason we'll do exactly the same bit here just to make sure that we've done it across all of them so that's the behavior pack one changed and i want to update that now let's go to the resource pack one let's go to the manifest file and we'll do exactly the same thing 213 213 and then 213 and we'll save that we'll close that we'll update that now if i double click this it should import it in even though it's the same pack we've already got because it's got a different id there we go look successfully imported it so all the game's looking at when it's importing it is that id file so if you're running into issues with duplicate packs that's why so now we've got exactly the same pack listed twice in our world other reasons why you might have issues and you might find that the pack's not working properly if you go to your storage and you go to your cache data you'll often find that you've got lingering bits of resource pack in there and also some of your resource packs in here the other good thing about these ones is it will actually show you when you click on them a little exclamation mark and it will often tell you warning there's a missing file or there's an error with some of it so this is a really good way in your storage section of finding out if you've got issues with your files so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to delete these ones now because i don't want to be using these ones and we're going to go and have a look at how we get resource packs into an existing world okay so i've got an existing world here that i want to add a pack to i'm not going to create a new one i just want to add a pack to that so same thing again i go to the little tick box there and then i can add my packs directly to it here now i've got no behavior packs installed so what i need to do is go back to my pack folder double click on whichever pop pack it is that i'm going to be adding import that to my game and then when I go to my existing world, I should be able to then add that in to my existing world. Now, it is going to say, do you want to turn off achievements? In order to have add-ons on, you do need to do that. So now, when I go into my world, that will be added into the game. Now, we haven't died at all yet, so it's not showing up on the counter. But if we add commands to this world again, so we can kill ourselves. Kill our S. Respawn. And you'll see that is now working. So that works perfectly well 
What about if you want to add it to a realm? Well, if we go into our realm settings, realms have been updated so you can actually add them to a realm just using these bits down here. So you can add your resource packs directly onto your realm just from down here. So we can add those onto our realm like that. And then if we go back out of it, it's actually going to initialize that and upload that to the world. But what if you want to start a brand new world on a realm with those behavior packs already added on? Well, if you add them to your survival world first, then you can just go into your realm and choose replace world. And when you choose the world you've already got it on, that will have the packs installed already. If we go to resource packs now and behavior packs, you'll see that's got it on already. We didn't need to add it ourselves. So if we go into that realm, you can see that the death counter is working it's already built into it because we uploaded it from the single player world so that's the easiest way to add them to anything is to do it to your single way player world first make sure they're working and then upload it to your realm and likewise with servers so let's look how we add these things to servers and this is where we're going to get a little bit more complicated so for the next step we're going to look at how we get our world with our behavior pack and our resource pack into a bedrock dedicated server we're going to start with a brand new fresh one rather than trying to hack it into an existing world we're going to start from fresh and then we'll do the hacky one after that so we're going to come to minecraft.net forward slash download server bedrock we're going to click on i agree and we're going to download the bedrock dedicated server we're then going to create a brand new empty folder i've got called it underscore bds on our root drive or c drive you don't have to call it that you can put it wherever you like but i'm going to go to my downloads folder and i'm going to drag that bedrock server into there like that I'm going to right click it and do extract all and I'm going to get rid of the folder name that it wants to give me and I'm just going to leave it with C drive and then BDS and extract it to there. Like that, we can get rid of that zip file, we don't need that anymore. So first thing we're going to do before we do anything else, we're actually going to run this server and make sure we can connect to it. The Windows Defender might come up and say, hey, are you sure you want to run this? It is safe, so we're going to click more info and run anyway. And there we go, that server is now running. Let's go to Minecraft. I've already added it in here. Localhost. You can call the server name whatever you want. Server IP address. Well, it's running on my PC, so I'm doing that. The port is the port that is specified in the server properties file of the BDS server. If I save that and click on that, we will go into this world. And if I open the console, you'll say, see there, player connected, Foxy Hotel. And we're in a brand new world that this is generated. So let's come out of that world for a second. Let's go back to our server console and type in stop and hit return. That's going to stop that. And let's go back into this folder. And you'll see we've got a lot more folders that we had a minute ago. And the main one we're looking at right now is worlds. If we go into worlds, you'll see bedrock level. And this is the world that we've just created. Now, we don't want this one. We want our world. So what I've done is I've gone into my world like I did before. And I've created a brand new one. And I've added the chunk loader pack in there and I've added the chunk loader resource pack and if we go to play on this world as you'll see in a second Chuck is here so this is working absolutely fine so let's close that I'm going to go to the little pen I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom and I'm going to click export world and I want this to go into that folder we've just created in the worlds folder there so if I click export that's going to export directly into there and if we open that folder back up, you can see chunkloader.mcworld is in that folder. Click on that. And what I want to do is change the name of it from .mcworld to .zip. And then I'm going to right click extract all. And I want it to actually be in that folder that it's suggested to me. So I'm going to click extract. Now it's created a new folder with all of the behavior pack and resource pack stuff already in it. Let's click on the zip file and delete that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this folder to have the same name as that one. So I'm going to click on that, hit F2, Control C to copy that and then delete that. Then I'm going to click on this one, hit F2 and then click Control V to paste that. And now we've got the bedrock level with all of the stuff from that world. So now if we go to run the server, like so, that's going to load up the world with Chuck Loader in it. If we go into that, you will see... Chuck is not there. Chuck has not come into this world. And there's a good reason for that. So let's figure out why. If we do function and run to load Chuck in, it will say cheats aren't enabled in this level. The other thing we've got to be careful of here is that we're not an operator. We are only a member. So first thing we need to do is go into our server console and do OP and then your player name. So OP, Foxy No Tail. 
and it'll say opt foxy no tail and you'll now see i've got a crown instead of a star and i can change things as i see fit for all the other players so now i'd be able to run commands but we still don't have cheats enabled on this level so i need to come out of that stop the dedicated server again go back into the dedicated server folder go to servers.properties and change the fourth line down which says allow cheats from false to true save that go back to our server folder open the server again and now let's log in and let's see if it'll let us do that now so now we should be able to run function and then run but it says function run not found so we've still got a problem there and the uh, the reason there's a problem is because the bedrock dedicated server folder system is different to the minecraft one or the the, the vanilla one if you like so let's come back out of this Let's go back to our BDS folder and you can see in the worlds folder, in our world, we've got behavior packs and resource packs, which is where all of the files are. We've also got these world resource pack and world behavior pack files. These are really important and these actually need to stay here. But these ones, these folders need to go into the root folder. You'll see in the root folder for the server, we've also got behavior packs and resource packs folders and our behavior packs and resource packs aren't in there. So what we'll do is we'll go to worlds, we'll go to bedrock level, we'll go into behavior pack and then we'll click on that and click cut or I can do control and X, go back into the root folder, go into behavior packs and then hit paste and that's going to paste that in there instead. So it's taking it out of where it was and it's putting it into here instead. They don't need to be in both places. Then we go back into world, behead, bedrock level, resource packs, click on that, click cut. Let's go back to the root folder, resource packs folder and then click paste. Now there is another file here, says valid known packs. If we open that up and look at this, this is all of the files or the known pack files from inside of your behavior packs and resource packs folders. Now these ones, vanilla and chemistry, they are part of the vanilla world. And the same with these ones, vanilla, test vanilla and chemistry, they're all really important. So don't delete those. But if you do have other packs that you've added in personally, there could be a conflict, but these ones you need to keep. Now we don't need to change this one at all, that will update itself. So when we go to run a bedrock server, like this, it's going to start running again. And now if we click on valid known packs, it will show us that our new packs are already in there. We can see this one, behavior packs, Foxy Chun is in there, and resource packs, Foxy Chun. So it's added those, we didn't need to add those. And so now, if we go into our local host server and join that world, you should find that if I do function and run, Chuck will appear. So that is now running on a server. He is working, he's in here, it's all working exactly as it should be doing. So just to recap there, the behavior pack needs to be in the root behavior packs folder. The resource pack needs to be in the root resource packs folder, not in the world ones. We can delete those ones altogether if we want and that will still work. But these ones, the world resource pack and world world behavior pack files need to be there these files point our world to these folders so if you don't have those it's not going to work so the final part of this tutorial is how to add your add-ons into an existing server if you've already got a server and you want to add these add-ons to it let's have a look at that so as you can see we've got an existing server listed there if we go to it, you can see it is here. I'm using the same one we had before, but it's the same theory. We've got a world. The world doesn't have any resource packs. It's got none of the resource pack files in there. And if we go into the behavior packs folder, there's no custom behavior packs and there's no custom resource packs. It's still got the vanilla ones. They're really important. And if we go into our valid known packs file, you can see there's no custom ones. There's only vanilla ones and the, the chemistry ones which need to be in there. So that is basically us on our server back at square one. So let's run this server. Again, let's make sure we can actually connect to it like so. And when we log in here, let's just check that we're in the right server. It says on the console that I've connected. That's good. So let's stop this server. We don't want it running at the moment. And let's add our packs to it. So the easiest way to add our packs would be to export our world into here again like we did the last time. But let's say we haven't got that opportunity. Let's say that we've only got the pack files. How do we add them in to our world or our server if we've only got the raw pack files? And it's quite easy. Let's take our chunk loader MC add-on file. Let's copy it. And let's go back to our server folder. And this time in the main server folder, I'm going to paste it into here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it. I'm going to do open archive. 
and I'm going to move that across slightly and I'm going to drag the behavior pack one with the B into behavior packs folder. I'm going to drag the resource packs one, the one with the R, into the resource packs folder like that and then I can close that and we should see now we've got our chunk loader B in there and we've got our chunk loader R in there. So now we've actually put those in there, we can delete our .mc add-on file and we can run the bedrock server and hopefully we'll see in this now if we go to valid known packs that they have been added in chunk loader b chunk loader r so they've been added in automatically which is great but they won't work if we go to our server like so and we do function and run it's going to say function run not found and the reason for that as we explained before is that in our world folder we don't have those world resource packs or world behavior packs files we need to make those now so what i'm going to do first of all is i'm going to stop the server like that so i'm going to create a new file by right clicking and going to new and text document i'm going to call and i'm going to call it world resource packs json and it's going to say are you sure you want to change it i'm going to click yes and i'm going to do exactly the same thing again I'm going to call it world underscore behavior underscore packs dot json or json for short and I'm going to change that and then I'm going to open up the resource packs one. So what we need to do with this file is actually point this file to our resource pack which is in our root directory here. We need to point it to this one. So if we open this one and click on manifest that's going to come up in our text editor and we can see the UUID that we need to point to. We can also see the version number there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy the UUID and version all the way just before that comma there. So we're going to copy both of those with control C and I'm going to go into that file that I just made world resource packs file and I'm going to start with an open square bracket. Then I'm going to drop down tab in and do an open brace which is I call a curly bracket. Then I'm going to drop down with return and then tab in and then I'm going to paste what we've just pasted there. Then I'm going to drop down again, do a closed brace and then a closed square bracket there. Now this UUID we need to change to pack underscore ID and the version can stay exactly as it is. So that is absolutely fine. Now you might often find that the version number is actually written like that in a straight line rather than down. It doesn't matter, it's just JSON formatting. As long as you've got a comma after the top line and not after the bottom line and you've got your braces in the right position, that will be absolutely fine. So I'm going to save that and now I'm going to go back to our folder. I'm going to open the world behavior packs file we created. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go to our root file, I'm going to go to behavior packs, I'm going to open our chunk loader underscore B1 and I'm going to open the manifest file. I'm going to copy from the beginning of the quote mark on UUID to the end of the square bracket after version. I'm going to copy that, I'm going to go into that new file just created, I'm going to do a square bracket followed by an open brace and then I'm going to paste it, close the brace, close the square bracket like that. And before I forget, I need to remember to change the UUID to pack underscore ID there on our worldbehaviorpacks.json file. I'm going to save that. And now if I run the server by going to our root directory and clicking on bedrock server, and we log into that world, fingers crossed, if all has gone well, we should find that Chucky's with us. There we go. So it's worked. So if we now do function run, you'll see we can create another chuck. So that is how you do it. All you've got to do is make sure that you're pointing the files to the right place. Now, if you do all of those things and it still doesn't work and you're still not getting your packs to work properly, then there could be a number of reasons. What I would suggest doing, first of all, if you're on a dedicated server and you're having issues, is just start from scratch. Make a brand new server and see if you can do it the way I did it originally and actually get them working on a brand new world. Next thing to do is check that you haven't got other packs that things are conflicting with. Resource packs are generally okay 
to be worked with other resource packs. So you can have multiple resource packs, but behavior packs or add-ons are not. If an add-on has the same file on two packs, for example, our death counter one here and our one player sleep one here, both use the player entity. They both manipulate those. So those packs won't work together. Whichever pack you add at the top is gonna overwrite the other one. So with behavior packs, you can only have one behavior pack on at once or multiple if you can guarantee that none of the files are going to overlap each other. So if you've got more than one pack on, remove the other ones until you get it working. Other things that potentially could cause a problem are the UUID conflicts, which we mentioned earlier, and just broken packs, you know, downloads not downloading correctly, uh, badly formatted files, things like that. There are a few different reasons why it wouldn't work. At the end of the day, if you go back to square one, delete your world, Delete your custom behavior packs, delete your custom resource packs, run the world, make sure it works properly, and then add them in again. You really shouldn't have a problem. And just to remember, with the dedicated server, you need to make sure that your behavior packs are in the right folders. Your valid known packs has the packs listed in there, which should be automatic, but just double check. If they've not gone in there, it could be that there's an error with one of your packs and it's not picked it up correctly. If they've not gone in automatically, it means there is a problem with one of your packs. Make sure you don't have duplicates. Make sure you haven't added them in twice. Make sure you haven't added the behavior pack into the resource pack folder and vice versa. Make sure you've not put them in the development ones and make sure that you don't have them in your worlds folder, but you do have these two files pointing in the right places and they've got the right UUID numbers in there. And make sure it says pack ID and not UUID. There's a lot of things to go wrong. It's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but it is doable and it's definitely doable and you can all do it. Go back to our single player worlds and our realms. That couldn't really be easier for us. The game does it itself. I guess if you're playing on Xbox or PS4 or something like that, you're going to struggle. There are ways to get file managers on your consoles to add them in. I'm not going to go into that because to be honest with you, I don't have it on those systems and I wouldn't be talking from experience. I would be making it up as I go along. So if you want to learn how to add it to your Xbox and your PS4 or your Switch, go along to YouTube or Google and find a good tutorial that will show you how to do it. The information I've given you today about where the folders and everything go and how to link to them will still be the same no matter what device you're on, but how to actually get the files in the right places on the other devices is something that I'm going to leave you with yourselves. Anyway, as usual, I would like to say thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, do please leave a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.